story by U slash mdevi75. This is kind of silly, but I still think about it frequently and try to figure out what happened. I was living in a two-story house with my family and I was putting my contacts in for the day. As anyone who's had to use contacts knows, sometimes they fall off your finger before they get in your eye. Well, my contact fell off my finger and nine times out of ten, I'll find it in the sink or the counter by the sink. I looked for it in the sink and the counter, even the floor. And when I couldn't find it, I searched my clothes and branched out to places that I didn't think it could possibly be. I searched for at least 30 minutes in that bathroom, which was not that big. I'd lost a contact before, and my mom had gotten really mad, and I didn't want to deal with that. Also, my vision is pretty bad, so I wouldn't be able to see with one contact. I was also in the bathroom alone and had the door locked so no one could get in. Nobody came in and I wouldn't have let them because I was afraid it was on the floor and that they would step on it and I would lose it forever. After a thorough search, I finally gave up and hoped fresh eyes later would find it. I walked down the stairs and went about my other business. A little while later, my younger cousin got up. He never went upstairs because only his sister and I had bedrooms up there. He was about six, so he was just running around in the living room and kitchen while I complained about losing my contact. He came over to me, and we talked a little. Then I stood up to go look for my contact again. And then, I happened to look down at his curly hair and notice something stuck in it. Well, you can probably guess. It was my contacts. I could not believe it. I have no idea how it fell in the upstairs bathroom and ended up downstairs in my little cousin's hair. Nobody in the house could explain how or why that happened. Can You Be Stuck Between Two Universes? by Reception Extension 82 I went for a hike a couple of days ago, and I think I may have shifted or I'm in between two realities since. Think the shift happened in the woods. Swore I saw my sister's dog run over the hill in the distance and not come back, so I'm calling for her. My sister and dad asked me what I'm doing. The dog is right in front of us and always has been. I tell them what I saw and we laugh it off, that I saw what happened in another reality. But nothing has been the same since. Like, my mom has been extra different to me. I'm visiting for a week. I live in a different state than my hometown. I asked for cupcakes and she, for the first time ever, got dairy-free ones for me. I have been dairy-free for eight years. Washed a towel and bedding for me with fragrance-free detergent. I've been using fragrance-free for eight years, etc. My niece has been clingy to me, like crying that I'm leaving, which the last few times I visited, she was just like, okay, bye. So besides everything feeling different since the hike in the woods, I saw a bug in my bedroom on the radiator. I went to pick it up with a random bottle, and I swear to God, the minute the bottle touched the bug, the bug disappeared. That's why I'm wondering if I'm stuck, or transitioning, or something where I'm seeing parts of one universe while being in another. Is this possible? I know, it seems crazy. Is there any way to know anything I should worry about? Story by you slash lurid sun. I drink lots of water during work, while at home, even outside, and I carry and keep my water bottle beside me all the time, even while in bed. 
This morning, when I woke up, I reached for the bottle and took two sips as usual, and then placed it back on the table where I always keep it. And then I went to check my phone, all while still in bed. Twenty to thirty minutes passed, and I reached for the bottle, and I couldn't find it there. I literally said, "What the hell?" Because I've been following this routine for years, and as long as I can remember, I've been seeing that bottle there whenever I wake up and check the entire room, thinking it must have fallen off and rolled into some corner. But the bottle wasn't there in my room. I immediately knew this was fishy. Once again, I checked the entire room and made sure that the bottle wasn't there, and it wasn't. I went to my workstation, which is the room right next to my bedroom, and there it stands on the table, on the exact spot where I keep it whenever I'm gaming or working. I just couldn't comprehend what had happened. I was fully awake when I took the two sips. And I still remember placing it back on the table. I never miss the night without taking a sip from it right before bed and right after waking up. This is my first time that I've experienced a glitch in the Matrix, and I'm still freaked out by it. Also, I have been completely sober this whole month. Portal in the Woods by Masquerading Muppet. Hi, I like to ask if anyone else has had an experience like this. I've had a handful of weird things happen in the woods in the years I've been camping. This one and one other experience have both stuck with me a lot. So this happened in September 2017 in the Kettle Moraine State Forest in southeast Wisconsin. Two friends and I decided to do a last-minute camping trip before the end of summer, and classes getting into the full swing. I was going into my grad school year, and my two friends were going to be seniors. None of us had been drinking when this happened. We set up camp and decided to go for a hike along the Ice Age Trail that ran next to the campgrounds before it got too dark. We didn't leave with a specific plan in mind, but found a loop trail and continued on that. This section of woods had trails that were on top of a ridge, so there were steep drop-offs on either side. Not like you die if you fell, but pretty steep twenty-foot hill drop, more like. So you really can't go off trail. So the trail is probably four to five miles, and by this point we're going on our last mile, and the sun is setting. We didn't realize we'd take this long, so none of us had our headlamps with us. But that's fine since we guesstimate we only have about another mile left or so. We round a small corner, and the trail ahead has a tree arching from either side of the path overhead, creating a doorway almost. That wouldn't be a big deal, except for the fact that the area of this doorway was shimmering. Almost like when you drop a stone into water and it ripples and sloshes a bit. We all stopped, and one of us said something along the lines of, "Am I dehydrated, or does that look weird?" And that's the best way I can describe it, at least. We all saw it, but there was no turning back at this point. We only had maybe thirty minutes of daylight left, and couldn't go around and couldn't turn back. Finally, one of us—I think it was me, but I—I I can't recall for certain—stuck our arm through. Nothing happened. It still looked the same, shimmering like water or heat off the back top on a hot day. We all walked through, and we're all fine. Seemingly. 
We joked for a few weeks slash days that we stepped into an alternate universe. I'm only friends with one of the friends now, and a few years later, I brought it up to her, and she just said she didn't want to think about it. It didn't impact me that way. I just thought slash still think it was odd. Anyway, I've heard of stairs in the woods, but we can't be the only ones to encounter a portal in the woods. Story by you slash fan fiction music lover. I have reached to that conclusion time and time again for years. The conclusion? Well, my family likes to eat salads, such as a chef salad, a salad with lettuce, tomatoes, cucumbers, and croutons. My aunt came up with a dressing, and its dressing has olive oil, pomegranate balsamic, honey, mustard, salt, pepper, sweet paprika, garlic, and also onion dust. But we also love potato salad, especially my dad. And that's where the problem lies. For years, my mom made the potato salad dressing. It had mayonnaise, ketchup, a bit of mustard, and a few drops of lemon juice and pomegranate balsamic. In the salad, besides the potatoes, we added gouda cheese, boiled eggs, and cold cuts, and that's it. That's how my mom always made it. Then one day, back in 2016, my mom realized that we had a few years that we hadn't made potato salad and decided to surprise us by making some, along with the sausages a family friend had brought the previous night that my parents had a sort of get-together with beers and various snacks. So, mom surprised us with a potato salad. But it was not how she used to make them. I commented on how the taste was odd, and she had added tomatoes, green and red peppers, and raw onions, and didn't add the gouda cheese and cold cuts. Then, both my dad and sister looked at me confused and said that the potato salad was the same as always. I, then baffled, asked my mom how she made the salad, but she just smiled and said that a cook never reveals their secret. This past Monday, aka May 23rd, 2022, I had to help my dad to cook lunch, aka the potato salad, which we had a long time to eat again. Since my mom had hit her knee and she was in pain and was busy sewing old clothes. I helped dad with cutting the onions, the gouda cheese, and preparing the eggs, while dad cut the tomatoes and peppers and potatoes. And when we were done with all of this, dad asked mom to give us instructions on how to make the salad dressing. Mom went on to tell us, but I was baffled. The salad dressing, according to my mom, was mustard, pomegranate balsamic, salt, pepper, a spice mix, and olive oil. I was so confused because she didn't even add ketchup as she usually did, or at least, that's what my taste buds tasted. Mom usually added more mustard and ketchup to the potato salad when we couldn't afford mayonnaise, but she never added onions and peppers or held the gouda cheese and cold cuts. Confused, I asked my mom why she had changed the recipe and both my parents looked at me angrily, too angry for just the recipe, and they started to yell at me for making a big deal about the salad. I hadn't made a big deal, I just found it weird that I had to cut raw onions, peppers, and tomatoes, and Dad hadn't bought a mayonnaise for the salad, but I never voiced it. I had just furrowed my eyebrows, but kept following Dad's orders, thinking that my parents might have decided to shake things up and attempt something new. I grew hurt 
when my parents accused me of making a big deal about it, when in fact I hadn't. I defended myself by saying that I hadn't said anything and that I was okay with trying some new recipe. Then dad grew even more annoyed and yelled at me that I was talking about a new recipe. I went on to tell them about how we usually ate the potato salad, and they looked at me as if I told them that I had signed myself up to join the European Space Agency while I have failed physics and chemistry. Mom said we never ate potato salad with mayonnaise or ketchup, but I persisted that we did, and the only time that we didn't was back in 2016 after that get-together. Dad sighed angrily and told me with an angry tone to stop being obsessed with mayonnaise, and if I didn't like the salad, I could cook something for myself, but we have never eaten a potato salad with mayonnaise. I gave up, and I just ate the salad, which wasn't bad, but it wasn't something that I would like to eat again, or at least I wouldn't add the tomatoes to it and add ketchup. I have many times butted heads with my parents about the way that they are making salad dressings in the salads that we usually eat, and every time, they say that I'm wrong and that we have never eaten the salad the way that I said. Most times, I just give up and chalk it up to me remembering it wrong, but now, I'm 10,000% sure that we have never eaten the potato salad like that again. Am I remembering a different timeline's potato salad or salad dressings? The Night Sky Disappeared by Masquerady Muppet Thought I'd post my other unexplained glitch here as well. Like I said in my previous post, I've seen slash felt a number of weird things in various national parks, BLM land, and national forests. I'm actually going to get my wilderness first responder certification this March because of some of the unease last summer in a remote park. But really, only this and my other post could be described as a glitch in the matrix. I did a volunteer program after college, and we frequently went on nature retreats as a big group. This happened in November of 2018 at a campground just east of Mount Rainier National Park. It was so remote that no one in our nearly 50-person group had cell phone service. Our only tie to the outside world was a ranger that came to check on us once a day. We weren't allowed to have alcohol or drugs at these retreats. So no, none of us were intoxicated in the slightest. There were a couple cabins throughout the campground, and if you walked through the trees a bit, there was a sizable lake. A few friends slash housemates and I went to look at the night sky because we knew it'd be full of stars. This is Washington State, so all the trees are massive and block out most of the sky. The only place we'd really be able to see the stars would be over that small lake. So we headed down to the lake area, despite it being pretty cold. There's two logs there for us to sit on as well. We settled in, waiting to see some shooting stars. It was a running joke in our house that we need to see five shooting stars when camping slash in the woods in order to fall asleep. Four out of five of us in this group all lived together at the time. So, we are all steadily watching the night sky for about 10 to 15 minutes when this happens. It only happened for maybe half a second, but we all saw it. For the shortest moment of time, half the sky went completely white. Just stark white, like a sheet of paper was placed over half of the night sky, right down the middle. 
After a moment, one of us said, Did everyone see that? We all confirmed what we saw. If you read my last post, you know that I, of course, was wanting to figure out what it was. I never found a solid explanation. And similarly with my other friends, these friends also told me to stop talking about it whenever I brought it up, months slash years later. It wasn't scary to me. Just again, super odd, and I didn't have an explanation for it. It made no sound, and was gone before any of us could comprehend it beyond what I described. It wasn't lightning. I'm from the Great Lakes region, so I know lightning. It wasn't an airplane. No idea. Story by you slash pastel underscore dreamer. Okay, this happened a while back, but I decided to share it. I remember sitting on the couch just watching YouTube on my phone when I got a craving for barbecue chips. I thought of the spicy barbecue chips my mom just bought and I made a beeline for the kitchen. I was watching a murder mystery podcast on YouTube, so I brought my phone with me because I wanted to keep watching while I grabbed a bowl of chips. I sat my phone down on the center island and paused the video before turning around to face the cabinet with the bowls inside and grabbed a bowl and opened the cabinet with the chips with my other hand. I then opened the bag and proceeded to pour the chips into the bowl and had a thought like, <laughs> imagine if I turned around and lost my phone. Because sometimes I lose my stuff stupidly. After I put the chips away, I grabbed my bowl and turned around to face the island again, and lo and behold, my phone was gone. Honestly, I jumped a bit because I literally had a random thought about my phone going missing, and now it suddenly is. That was weird. Maybe I sat it behind a flower vase? I checked behind it. No. Maybe it's on the counters. I checked around and still nothing. I was absolutely dumbfounded. There was no way that I had left it on the couch because I remember walking to the kitchen, phone in hand, watching the video, and then placing it on the empty island table, and then pausing the video. I decided to go back to the couch and look there. I checked under the pillows, cushions, under the couch, and around the whole living area, and nothing. My phone was gone. It was like it just disappeared out of thin air, and I was confused as hell. I then called upstairs to my older brother and asked him to call my phone so that I could find it, and he did. Seven seconds later, I hear buzzing coming from the couch and my phone is on the top of a pillow in plain sight. I stared at it for a bit before picking it up and declining the call since I had found my phone. And to this day, I still have no idea how the hell my phone ended up there. I went missing for two hours at my intern workplace. By Unidentified OP. So it's my second day there, but I have found the basic needed facilities, like the toilet, staircase, lift, emergency exits, and so on. For the level I'm on, the toilet is one way so there is a corner you turn to get to the toilets. At this corner, there is a camera that points away from the door. So if you have to go to the toilet, you would naturally pass by the camera twice. I got to the office, set down my things, and went to use the toilet. I finished my business and headed back to the office, where I see my supervisor and the other person I'm supposed to be shadowing. The rest of the people in the team were also staring over my stuff talking and looking concerned. 
When I entered, one of my friends, who was also an intern at this place, saw me and honestly said, She's back. With so much relief. I looked very confused and said I just went to the toilet. My supervisor just said, You were in the toilet for two hours? I was like, what? No, I was in there for ten minutes, max. Then where have you been? We all thought you were missing. What? I just got here and went to the toilet. Did no one go and check the toilet? We did, but no one was inside it. What? Well, at least you're okay. Back to work. I was still confused, but brushed it off. During some free time in between tasks, I went to the security office and asked to see the camera footage of the toilet on my level. He showed me, and I saw I had only passed the camera two times, and in between them, I saw one of my colleagues go into the toilet and come out a few minutes apart. I thanked the officer and went about my work. So yeah, I disappeared for two hours in my workplace toilet that only had one entrance and one exit. Edit number one. There are so many comments asking if this was the first time. Sadly, this isn't the first time. It's happened almost once every semester on campus. The longest I disappeared for is like 8 to 10 hours. My friend is well aware of it. I've had medical screenings done and psychological evaluations, but everything seems normal. The toilet also has three stalls, but my co-worker swears she opened all three. Edit number two. Thanks for all the awards. People have been asking for more detail about the camera footage, so I'm not able to get a copy of it due to actual security issues, but here's some of the details about it. The video is timestamped with the time and hours it has been recorded. I went in at 8 hours 34 minutes and came out at 10 hours and 30 minutes. My colleague went in at 9 hours 1 minute and came out at 9 hours 8 minutes. The camera caught both of us going in and coming out. I did ask if they could check the rest of the cameras along the corridor from the toilet. They did, and it all showed I was missing for two hours. I specifically checked the camera in front of the office door that looked partially into the office and the corridor outside. The camera did see me walk through the corridor to the toilet and back from it. The only thing odd was that the camera kind of shifted a bit for a few seconds to a minute, like it kind of glitched. It was at the 9 hours and 12 minute mark. But there's no way I could have exited the toilet and walked back to it without the other camera at the office door catching me. Or for the fact that I could have gone out past the office or walked around and went back into the toilet in about a minute. Story by you slash blue underscore blueberry 5402. About a month ago, I had what I think may have been a glitch in the matrix. It all began as a normal day. I got up in the morning, went through my morning routine, went to work, and then went home. Nothing strange happened that day, but I do remember seeing some heat lightning off in the distance. It was a relatively sunny day, with a few clouds in the distance. This will come up later. On my way home from work, I did notice a lot of construction, and I mean a lot, way more than usual. It looked like it was on telephone poles, underground wiring, and etc., but I didn't really pay much attention to it. Here's where it begins to get weird. When I got home, the TV was on. I'm pretty sure that I turned it off in the morning, as I usually do after watching the news. I had microwave pasta for dinner while I watched the TV. After dinner, I went to my bedroom, where I also have a TV. I got changed for the night, 
and went through my routine per usual. I went to bed, not really ticked off about anything that happened that day. Here's where it gets really interesting. In the middle of the night, I woke up, and I don't do this too often. This time, I felt something really weird. A really strange feeling was in me. For some reason, the TV was on. It was turned to Cartoon Network, which I never watch. The time on the clock was 12, and it was flashing as if the power went off. I was kind of freaked out, and about 10 seconds after I woke up, I saw a flash outside and heard the loudest noise that I have ever heard. I was sure that I was struck by lightning. From this point, until I woke up in the morning, I have no memory. I woke up to my alarm clock sound at my usual wake-up time, which is 7.30, and I went through my routine as I thought about what the heck happened last night. When I got to work, which is near my house, I asked around to see if anyone has any recollection of a storm last night. My one co-worker said she had. Then she told me this same story, word for word. I was not under the influence of any drugs or alcohol, and nothing like this has happened to me before. I never used to believe in glitches or magic, but now, I think I do. What happened? Story by you slash Wenchity Wrench Wench I've dragged my heels on typing this out because there's just no normal explanation and I don't have anything that can even be argued. But how could it have even happened? You know the drill. It's also about menstrual blood, so trigger warning for anyone that needs that, I guess. So, I was sitting in bed with my husband on top of our new light blue comforter. I was wearing his pajama pants and had made the remark that I was tempting fate because I was about to start my period. And for some reason, I always managed to bleed through onto these damn pants, even when I'm not due to start. But he's amazing and doesn't care, and it's just funny at this point because it just washes out, no harm, no foul. Anyhow, if you're a female, you know that feeling you get when you think you may have suddenly started your period Versus when you know. I had a split second knowing and swore as I reached down and felt blood, then looked down, simultaneously hopping up to reveal a baseball-sized spot of blood on my new damn comforter. No print, just light blue, making the stain as obvious as it gets. My feet barely touch the floor as I run to get to the bathroom without creating a further mess, and I'm dropping the pants as I go so I don't make that worse too, as I've got blood on my hands. The bathroom is right around the corner from the bed, and he had been sitting there beside me, reading something, and hadn't said anything to my commotion. But it all had happened in the span of about three seconds. I am rummaging around for cleaning supplies, and I call out to him. It's fine, it's fine, I'm just bleeding out, everything's fine. Just riffing off that everything's on fire, but then he calls back. What are you talking about? Why do you hop up? Are you okay? To which I stop what I'm doing and pause for a second, looking down at myself. I mean... There's oblivious, and then, there's oblivious, I'm thinking. So I walk out slowly, pantless, and with blood on my legs and stare at him dryly, and say in a tone, and go, No reason. He jumps and is like, Oh shit, are you okay? Man, you called it with the pants. And I'm like, I'm fine, thanks. 
But I'm sorry about the pants and the blanket. I can get that out if I get it into the wash now, though. Can you get up, please? And I'm seeing this as I'm walking over to him. So I'm also seeing this right as I'm realizing that there is no blood on the bed. The baseball-sized dark red blood stain is not there. And given that, I'm standing there covered in it. There is some momentary silence and staring, and a general what the hell happened for a minute, before I suddenly get the urge to run back to the bathroom to go for the pants that I dropped on the floor a minute ago. The perfectly fine, now entirely bloodless spotless pants that I am now holding with the same bloody hand that I yanked them off with. I have no idea. I don't know what else to say. There's just not a thing to say, really. We were both sober. Blood was there, substantially, and then it wasn't. This happened again with something else a few weeks later, but I'll make a separate post for that. Story by you slash Oneida Mojo This happened about three weeks ago. I had a day off work and my cousin Harold asked if I could drive him to pick up new tires for his truck. They were being sold in a town just over an hour away and basically it was a two-lane country highway straight shot all the way there. About halfway there, he points and says, Hey, look at that house over there. It has vultures all over it. I've never seen that before. Sure enough, on the left side of the road was an old two-story country farmhouse with seven to eight vultures sitting on the roof. There was another three or four circling the property overhead. Immediately, I blurted out that maybe they smell something dead inside and we just stared as we drove by. Anyway, we get his tires and it slipped from our mind. On the way back, we had the windows on the truck down. When, suddenly, we got a good whiff of rotting flesh and sure enough, we were passing by that house again, but we didn't stop and went home. I couldn't stop thinking about it, and I called Harold to tell him so. He said that he couldn't even sleep, as it was bugging him too. I proposed that the right thing to do was to go back to the house, get the address, and call it to the police for a welfare check. What if someone was dead inside? What if they had family? He agrees, and we immediately set off. As the title suggests, we couldn't locate the house. We drove all the way to that town where we got the tires, then turned around and we couldn't find it on the way back either. It was like the house ceased to exist. There was no house, no vultures, a smell of death that matched what we saw the previous day. We even went out and did the same thing the next day with no luck. But now... The more I think of it, what we saw made no sense. Although it was a country highway, there still had to be thousands of cars and trucks on it every day, not to mention police patrols. Surely, one of those would surely have noticed a creepy old farmhouse with a shit ton of vultures on it and put two and two together. I still can't explain it, and it still bothers both me and my cousin. Story by you slash Mindless Airport 9003 When I was in 10th grade, my classmate Julia asked me to accompany her to meet her friend in a different class. The class was quite far and after a while, we returned to our class. Since the hallway was so crowded, I walked behind Julia and was about a meter apart. I saw Julia enter the class, and when I was about to enter the class, 
Suddenly, I was already sitting in my chair with Sarah. I don't remember how I made my way to my seat, but I was suddenly eating chips with Sarah. I saw Julia enter the classroom, and Julia screamed when she saw me. She was very pale and kept saying that I should be behind her. But suddenly, another memory entered my head. I walked out of class with Sarah and bought some chips in the cafeteria when the bell rang. We went back to the classroom and ate some chips together. Before I could say anything, Sarah told Julia that she had been with me the whole time. Because Julia was a bit hysterical, some students tried to calm her down, but they all said that I had indeed returned to class a few minutes ago. I didn't say anything about me actually remembering that we went to another class together because I didn't want to be thought of as crazy and I didn't know about the glitch's existence at that time. Julia's friends in another class didn't see me because I didn't enter the class and I just played on the phone in front of the door. But she remembers Julia telling her that I accompanied her there. None of the other students saw me going with Julia during that time. Julia and everyone thought that this was a ghost story, and Julia got a lot of amulets from the temple that day. I don't know what happened that day, but I certainly can tell Julia that I actually went with her. Everyone, what do you think really happened? Story by you slash I am Poom I've had many unexplainable occurrences throughout my life, but a couple of weeks ago, I've had my very first glitch in the Matrix type event. What makes this one so amazing is that my husband was there for the whole thing. Otherwise, I might have written it off as my lizard brain deceiving me once again. My husband is a car guy, and he is very analytical about how he operates his cars. He has all these little gadgets and doodads, so when he starts his car, he turns the key forward and lets all the electrical stuff start up before fully turning the key to start the engine. It probably only takes 4 seconds total, and yes, this is important. So, we hop in the car one warm Saturday morning to go get all the goods for a giant breakfast feast. And as he is turning a ski over in a slow weird way, he says out loud, Did I bring my sunglasses? And without skipping a beat, his car, in her car voice says, You did. Just like she was answering his question. We both just looked at each other in shock for a second before confirming that we each heard the same thing. He looked down and saw his sunglasses sitting in the cup holder, so she was right too. By then, he had fully started the engine, but his phone had no time to connect, and why would it answer his questions anyways? His car has buttons on the steering wheel that make it speak, so he pressed the button and sure enough, that's his car's voice. My husband is a no-nonsense military man who doesn't like to think or talk about these types of things. We have had paranormal experiences that forced him to acknowledge that this stuff happens, but he would rather pretend that it doesn't exist. I'm sort of on the opposite end of the spectrum, and I was super excited about the whole thing. Like if one of you has a plausible explanation for this, I'm going to be disappointed as hell because I love this stuff. But anywho, that's my story. Story by you slash Lunar Wolf 1991 this takes place in Michigan in the summer of 2006. My friends who I will call K and P for this were hanging out with me. 
We were walking in the woods, and we found this old house set into a hill, and it was filled with water. We looked in all the windows, and my friend Kay was going to open one of the windows, and I told him, No, don't. You'll let all the water out. We should go get our swimming trunks, and then use this place as our swimming spot. So, we all left and got our swimming trunks and came back to the house. I've seen a sunlight on the roof, and I said, Hey Kay, you think we can get into the house from that? He said we can try, so we climbed up to the roof, and it was one of those hook lock windows, so we opened it and jumped in. The water was so clear that you could see everything. Now, this is where the glitch starts to come into play, but we didn't pay attention. We just thought that the furniture was nailed down and that's why it wasn't floating. So we used this place as our swimming pool for about a month. And one day, me and K and P just go up to the house not to swim, just to hang out because it was a cool place. I turned and started talking with P, and I don't remember what we were talking about, but I turn back around and see K opening up the window, and I yell, Why isn't the water coming out? K says, I don't know. Then I say again, asking why isn't the water coming out, and K says that he doesn't know, then P says, that we should just go in. Kay and I say all right, and we go in the house. And it's at this point that we figure out that the water isn't ordinary water. You could breathe in it and talk in it, and we thought that this was the coolest thing ever. For about a week and a half, we would go into this house and just chill after we found that out. Then... The water disappeared, and after that, my friends and I forgot how to get to the house, and every time we tried to find it, we would get really bad headaches. I really wish that I could remember where it was in the woods. Story by You Slash Lemon Pepper 2021 Okay, so this happened quite literally an hour ago. Honestly, I'm baffled. It's usually because he's dropped his dummy out of the cot and it's a case of putting it back in his mouth and leaving the room. I go upstairs and move him back to lying down and move his blankets. I couldn't find his dummy anywhere. Albeit, it was dark in the room, and I searched everywhere. I searched all under the cot with my phone light, searched around where he could have possibly threw it on the floor, searched every gap in the slots at the side of the cot, picked my son up again, and put his blanket on the floor. I shook the blankets quite vigorously. Nothing in the cot, nothing attached to my son, and absolutely nowhere to be seen. At this point, I'm stressing because my son is screaming the house down and won't go back to sleep without his dummy. My girlfriend comes upstairs, picks up my son, moves the blanket, and at first nothing was there. But within a split second, I saw it coming through the mattress. Like I actually saw it come through the mattress. Where my girlfriend was stood, she didn't and wouldn't have seen it and was in and out the bedroom in a few seconds. And it never really registered to me until I came back downstairs with what I just have witnessed. I've tried fathoming how on earth it happened, but I swear to God, that cot was completely empty when I took the blanket out. I shook it like mad, put it on the floor, picked my son up, and checked. Story by you slash Yulka95 So, 
I sleep in a very small rectangular room, single-size bed which is attached to the wall from the long side, and there's a bedside table right at the foot of the bed where I keep my nightlight. I really can't sleep in the dark, and I place my phone there while I sleep. I wake up at 3 a.m. because of the very hot weather and I am sweating a lot. I decided to make a trip to the bathroom and I usually bring my phone with me everywhere, so I proceed to stretch to the bedside table to grab it, only to see that it wasn't there, it wasn't anywhere. So keep in mind that I used the nightlight so the room was bright enough for me to be able to see if it was there or not. It just wasn't. I go in and turn on the main light to look for it. I thought, maybe I kicked it in my sleep since my feet can reach that spot easily while in bed. I looked under the bed behind the bedside table, literally everywhere around the area, and it's just nowhere. So at this point, I'm pretty sure it must have creeped somewhere pretty hidden, so I sit on the bed trying to catch some air from the fan, since I was sweating a lot trying to look for the damn phone. And as I was thinking that I'll just look for it in the morning, I turn around to the bedside table, and believe me or not, it was there all the time. I don't do alcohol or drugs, the room was lit and all, and nobody else could access the room, and I've looked at that spot multiple times before finally seeing it. Also at that point, I was very awake while I was looking for it, so it couldn't be just the drowsiness for having just woken up. So, what was messing with me? Story by you slash Mostly nothing. This all happened about 10 years ago, and I was in my early 20s. I lived in an old city in Eastern Europe. My house was large and old, close to downtown, and partitioned into 5 to 6 apartments. I lived in the smallest. It was a one bedroom, one kitchen, and a bathroom, and was almost below ground level. Not sure what you call that in English. Anyway, there was a large gas oven or stove in the kitchen that we used for both cooking and heating. One night, my then girlfriend and I lay in bed, half asleep, when a small painting that was hung on the wall above me shifted. Mind you, I've been living there for the past 10 years. Nothing ever moved. No breeze as I only had a door and a window, and they were both on the same side. I freaked out. I jumped out of bed, turned the lights on, and I couldn't understand how that painting suddenly moved. I went to the kitchen to look around and noticed that the gas was turned on in the oven or stove, but no flame. It was basically leaking gas. I switched it off and quickly realized that had the painting not moved on the wall, I was probably going to die that night. Nothing like that ever happened before or since, and I almost forgot had I not stumbled upon this sub randomly. This took place many years ago when I was a late teen. It was a warm summer afternoon. My friends and I were getting together with nothing to do. One of the group had a car, so we decided to drive out to another friend's house and see if he wanted to hang out. Another girl in the group had a crush on him and talked the driver into this. We get to his house, a trailer, on a really small lake about an hour before sundown. The friend was not home, and this was before everyone had a cell phone. So, we just decided to hang out in the car, listen to music, and wait to see if he came home. Like I said, we had nothing better to do. And while we were entertaining ourselves, we noticed a car on the other side of the lake, a pretty classic one. 
It looked just like Stephen King's Christine, Red Plymouth Fury, most likely same year or a similar one. We started making jokes about the car being in love with the person that we were trying to visit and that he was really in her trunk, you know, the evil red car. Eventually, we fell asleep. Friend gets home and knocks on the window to wake us. Then, we all go in his house and play some board games and stuff, and also chatted. We told him our joke about Christine kidnapping him. We commented on the pretty red car. He gave us a funny look and said, What red car? So we went outside to point it out. There was a street light directly over it, so there were no issues seeing it clearly. But now, it was light blue. This lake was small, and the car was about as far as two city blocks would be. No reason that we could not see it before or after. Plymouth Furies aren't exactly a common car, and I can't imagine a red one driving away to be replaced with a blue one in the same spot in a few hours. Well, we are still relieved that it just changed color instead of coming to life and going on a murder spree. I think I'm stuck in the Matrix by Fast Profit 2212. Yes, the title sounds ridiculous, and I'll wear how crazy I'm going to sound, but please, just hear me out. Every day, I wake up at 10.32. My partner brings me the same coffee with two sugars and milk in the same mug. As I am about to drink my brew, my cat jumps up on the bed and sits on my chest. I smoke a cigarette whilst my partner plays a game of online poker. At 11 o'clock, I open the curtains, and outside, I always see the same red car drive past, and then a black one follows that gets stuck at the red light, which I can see from every window of the front of our house. I've never thought much of this part because it could just be coincidence, but here is where it starts getting weird. When I go into the kitchen, there's always these three same cups and one plate to be washed and the same amount of cat food in the cat bowl. When we turn on the TV, the same TV show, American Dad, is ready to play. Even though we don't watch that in the living room, I normally watch it on Disney Plus in the bedroom when I'm falling asleep. My friend always calls me at 1230 with the same conversation that we had the day before but we never discuss having a phone call at 12.30. My partner makes me the same ham sandwich for me at 1 o'clock. It always looks exactly the same, with the mayo dripping from the left side. My cat always comes across the sofa from the window to where I sat, but always meows at me three times first. My toilet routine is always the exact same, going to the toilet at the same time, doing the same thing every day. Every time we eat, I end up with chicken, mash, and veggies. The same pigeon sits on the fence, and I know it's the same because one of its feet is scrunched up and it stays there until we go to bed. We go to bed at 8, the annoying car goes past playing the same song, Gorilla's Dare, then my sister calls on FaceTime at 8.30 and always ends the call at 9.47. I roll a spliff and watch Family Guy. It seems to be the same episode, or they all blur into one and it seems like I've watched them before. My partner falls asleep at 10 and last night I just had enough. I can't make out whether I'm crazy in a mental routine or in a glitch in the matrix because this is driving me insane. I really need answers or help or just someone to tell me to shut the F up. I have tried to change the day by going to the park or seeing friends or inviting them around, going to the gym to break up the morning. I have tried changing what I eat or playing music. I even stayed away from the house for a full week. Literally so many things, but nothing changes. If people want proof, I will take pictures or videos, anything. I'm honestly getting to the point of moving homes now. This has only started when lockdown did, like a year and a half ago. Sorry for my grammar mistakes. I'm dyslexic. First edit. 
Someone commented to check my FaceTime records between me and my sister, and all that I found was that she hasn't been FaceTiming me. I've been FaceTiming her with unanswered calls. Also checked my calls from my friend at 12.30, and none exist at this time anywhere. This is strange. Second edit will be around 6.30 after I've spoken to my partner, sister, and friend all together. Second edit. Sorry guys, I never mentioned that I have epilepsy. It turns out that I've been having facial seizures throughout the day for a while. My partner has told me I walk around and talk to the windows and have been none the wiser. So yay, I'm going to have a call with my neurologist. Sorry about this post, I feel like a right twat, but hey, maybe it's something we can all laugh about together. So I know this is going to sound weird and ridiculous, but the craziest thing happened at Walmart yesterday that kind of freaked me out for a while. So me and my girlfriend go to Walmart pretty frequently. It's cheap and sometimes they have really cool Disney and anime shirts and, and stuff that we like and it's only 5 minutes from our house. So she told me that she was going to check the women's clothes to see if they have any biker shorts while I was going to go to the men's section to see if they had any new anime or Disney shirts. We decided that I would just meet back with her since the registers are right in front of the women's clothes and then we would go. When I was done checking the men's stuff, I see my girlfriend walk towards the food section and in my head, I was wondering why she was going there. So I started following her to catch up to her and I see her suddenly turn left. So I ran and then turn left and no one was there. It was an empty aisle, and I was kind of confused, so I ran some more looking for her, thinking that she was messing with me, and maybe went to the next aisle. And legit, there wasn't anybody near there, and I was confused on where she would have gone. So, I decided to call her up and said, Hey, where are you? And why did you go to the food aisle? I told you that I'd meet back up with you in the women's clothes. And she said, I am in the women's clothes. I've been in the same spot. Immediately, I said, I just saw you walk here. Referring to the section that I'm at, and she was really confused. I ran towards the women's section and found her and told her what happened and what I saw, and she said, maybe I mistook someone else for her. But my girlfriend is a pretty distinct girl. She's five foot nine and has really long blonde hair and is decked out completely in Disney. She was definitely weirded out but kind of shrugged it off, but honestly, I have no clue what happened. I was only like 7 feet from her when she turned the aisle and I don't think she would have made it all the way down to the next aisle by the time that I turned into it. And I ran around the entire vicinity looking for her because I thought it was weird. She was legit trying on clothes when I met back up with her at the women's section. So, who the hell did I see? Or what was it? The fact that this happened at Walmart of all places is weird in itself, but it really did freak me out. I know, people are gonna think, Oh, you just saw someone who looked like your girlfriend. But she was wearing something very specific. A Disneyland jersey, which you get only from the park with Disney Crocs. And we live in a retirement town near a res in the valley, so not many five foot nine blonde girls decked out in Disney here. Plus, the girl I saw disappeared basically into thin air, so even if it was a girl who looked like my girlfriend, it was still weird as hell. So, here's my glitch story. 
April 2017. My band was on a road trip to Roswell, New Mexico, of all places to play a gig. And I believe it was somewhere in Missouri at night that we stopped at a rest stop. No idea exactly where we were, but I remember saying to my bandmates as we pulled into the lot that this place gave me Twilight Zone vibes. It just had an eerie sort of presence to it, and I like that kind of shit, so it wasn't necessarily a bad thing. So, I don't even know what the other two guys were up to. They may have just stayed in the car. But what I do know is that me and the bass player had to go inside and piss. This is just your normal setup of a parking lot out front of a rest stop off a highway. I don't smoke anymore, but back then I did. Me and the bassist decided to smoke a cigarette first before going inside to pee. He offers me a cig and ensues to call up his girlfriend to update her on how the trip is going. So, I'm just standing there smoking and chilling, and he's standing next to me smoking and on the phone. We are both out front of the entrance to the rest stop, and we are both facing outwards towards the parking lot with our backs to the entrance of the building. Suddenly, while still on the phone, the bassist starts casually walking back out towards the van in the parking lot. I see him walking away, and his voice grew more and more distant. I don't recall how far away we parked, but there's only one lot, and I remember just seeing him walk into the distance in front of me, still on the phone with his girlfriend. This confused me, as I thought he had to go inside to piss, but I didn't give a shit, and I was finishing my cigarette as the moment unfolded. So I just shrugged and put out my cigarette and immediately turned around to head inside the rest stop building. As soon as you get inside, it's completely empty, but you have to walk straight down this hallway to get to the bathroom. I remember there was some sort of Route 66 clock that had a spiral shape or something directly above us as you entered the hallway. It just overall had a Twilight Zone sort of vibe to it. I don't know how exactly to explain this experience. So, I'm walking down the hall and get into the bathroom, and I hear someone in the stall who is talking on the phone. His voice sounds exactly like my bassist. No one else is in the bathroom. I can't see who is in there, but I'm standing at the urinal pissing and laughing about how weird it is that this guy sounds so similar to my bandmate. But I know for a fact it can't be him, as it would be physically impossible for him to have gotten into the bathroom before me when I had literally just saw him head out towards a car in the parking lot about 20 to 30 seconds earlier at most. I even said to myself, now that would be ridiculous if it was somehow him. But even as I said this to myself, I knew for a fact it wasn't him. Except that it was. Sure enough, a moment later, the stall door opens and out comes the bassist, still on the phone with his girlfriend. I'm finishing pissing, so he is behind me washing his hands. I turned around and I see him still on the phone, and he's now walking out of the bathroom. I don't even think that he noticed me in there with him, but at this moment, I was absolutely stunned. And I'm left there in the bathroom by myself wondering what the fuck just happened? I end up telling him and everyone about this when I got back to the van. And he also explains that he went through a different series of strange events, but I can't remember the details of his side of the story anymore. All I know is that it was simply physically impossible that he could have been in the bathroom before me when I literally saw him walk out into the distance towards the van 
and I immediately head inside to the bathroom. Sorry if this was overly long, but I wanted to be succinct as possible about how it went down. Now, I already posted something on this subreddit about time freezing, but hear me out. The year was 1999, and I was in Los Angeles at that time. I didn't live there, I just wanted to check it out. I was driving around the town looking at the buildings, and it was 8.15pm, and I was driving in the wrong direction. To get back to where I wanted to go, I had to drive through South Central. It was pretty quiet there for about 5 minutes, when suddenly, I heard loud bangs, which probably weren't gunshots, but it sounded like them. I heard cars honking and tires squeaking and screams, but nobody was hurt. I know because I drove there to take a look, which was actually a bad idea. Because long story short, some guys chased me around when I did that. So I went downtown of Los Angeles and it was quiet. Which seemed pretty strange because it was just 8.33pm and I was in a huge town. I started to panic and then started to drive faster than before. I went from a 25 in a 40 to a 40 in a 40. And then I saw cars but they didn't move. I parked my car while having a panic attack and then I fell asleep. When I woke up, Everything was back to normal, the only difference that it was 8.15pm again. And no, it was not a Mandela effect. I went to the next 7-Eleven store and bought myself a can of soda, and I drank it and while sitting on a bus stop, I fell unconscious. And when I woke up, it was 8.15pm again, and this freaked me out. I went on the highway and drove from LA to San Diego, and I checked in a motel and slept there. The next morning I wake up, completely exhausted, sweating, and my body is full of that soda from yesterday. I go outside and checked out again, and I drove back to LA. I visited my friend there who I didn't plan on visiting, and I stayed there for three days. I talked about it with him and he seemed very confused, which I can understand because I told him some alien bullshit or whatever, and he says that I was drunk. The only thing was, I don't drink. I never tried, never did, and I won't. And then I went back home. I just never talked about it again, and nothing happened until 2004. I Lost My Daughter Glitch by Mafiti. Hey, so this just happened and I have an eerie and weird feeling that something is not right. So first let me explain the placement of my house. When you come in, there is a little hall and in front of you is the bathroom. Then you go to the left and you have a small kitchen. Then a door, then it's my bedroom but it's so big, I turned it into a living room. Right next to my bedroom is my daughter's bedroom. Everything is in an L shape. I, 24, live alone with my daughter, 2, and our two pet bunnies. So I had lunch with my daughter, and it started getting cold and dark, so we went to my bedroom and closed the door to the kitchen. She always plays in my bedroom and her bedroom that are directly connected. I was reading some Reddit stories while I listened to her making her usual noises, talking to her, singing, asking me something, moving toys around, th the basic child noises. Suddenly, the house goes completely silent. And after a few seconds, I think that maybe she is being mischievous and doing something that she isn't supposed to, like all kids do. So I check on her since I didn't see her from where I was lying. 
Let me make it clear that there is no way for her to go outside without opening the creaky door to the kitchen that is in front of me, and she would never try to do it since the lights in the kitchen are off and she's scared of the dark. So I look everywhere in her bedroom and start calling her name. Nothing. Check in her closet. Nothing. Under her bed. In her little play tent. In her toy chest. Under my bed. The sofa. My desk. Everywhere. Nothing. She is nowhere to be seen. Let's mention that she has never tried to hide and stuff like that. She comes when she's called, so I started to freak out. I knew I didn't hear her leave my bedroom to the kitchen, but I checked anyways. Nothing. The bathroom. Empty. Now, I'm starting to panic and go outside again and check everything over. While I'm in her bedroom, I hear crying from outside and look through my daughter's window to see her outside laying on the ground only wearing a t-shirt. Not the t-shirt she was previously wearing, but one of the t-shirts she does have. I ran outside, almost falling over, but when I opened the door, silence. She wasn't there. There was no crying. Silence again. I go outside and check everything and can't find her or any trace of her being there. Defeated, I go back upstairs ready to call 911 when I go to my bedroom and see her calmly playing with some blocks in her bedroom. She was wearing her clothes as if she never disappeared. The t-shirt I saw her wearing outside was in her wardrobe neatly folded. I'm still in shock and sitting, staring at my daughter, feeling like if I blink, she might disappear again. This happened in Sanford, Florida in 2021 by Lake Monroe at the Veteran Memorial there, which has a lot of places to sit. It was around 2 a.m. or so, and me and my friend were sitting near a lake, enjoying the full moon. We were sober, and we don't do drugs at all. We spoke about all sorts of things that night, and how we tend to see a lot of crazy things in that particular location after 12 a.m. So, we are sitting there, and I look up at the moon, and I notice a dark spot on the full moon. And I thought, it was just a random dark cloud. I pointed it out to my friend, and at this point, we were both looking up. But this dark spot on the moon starts to spread, and it looks like cracks. The moon was cracking, and big pieces of the moon started to separate from it. We were both staring in disbelief, trying to make sense of what was happening. It felt like it shouldn't be happening. It felt wrong, like a glitch. We were not scared, just a bit confused. It felt off and very strange because the magnitude of what was happening never hit us. We keep looking up at the moon that has completely fractured and separated all within four minutes or so. And as we keep looking up, we see everything that happened being put in reverse. Just like if someone had hit a reverse button to all that had happened, we were seeing the moon get put back together. All this happened within two minutes, so the whole ordeal only took about six to seven minutes or so. After this, we looked at each other and came to the conclusion that we had just witnessed a glitch in the Matrix. And we were the only ones that saw it. No one online in our area was talking about it. And to this day, that was the most insane thing that I have ever seen. And now looking back at it, I have no idea what we did after that whole ordeal. It's like it's veiled or blocked from our memory. My friend feels the same way. I wonder if anyone else saw it.
This is the story of a mysterious scar in my left arm, specifically in the biceps. So about seven years ago, my best friend told me a story about how he got a scar in his left arm when he tried to drift his quad and some broken glass and one of the pieces flew to his arm causing the scar. At that time, I didn't have the scar myself. So two or three weeks later, his sister told me the true story of how he got the scar. He was in his room in a very sketchy house, and a big wardrobe with some glass windows fell on him without any explanation, and in the intent to stop the wardrobe, he got the scar. So I laughed at him about why he lied about it, but he didn't seem receptive to laughing to that story, so I let it go. I can't tell when, but in the following years, I got the same scar in my arm without any explanation. I don't know the exact moment when I saw it. It was very strange, like I knew why I had it, but I couldn't remember why or how. I just accepted that I had it. The other day, two months ago, I was with my girlfriend and we were talking about the scars and I wanted to show her the scar, but I couldn't find it. I started to panic, thinking it was in the other arm, or it was just my imagination. I was overwhelmed for at least one hour because of it. This last week, it reappeared. Or I just noticed it. It was with other small scars all around, and I really don't know what to conclude from this story. This happened about 15 years ago, but we still talk about it and wonder what happened. It was New Year's Eve and we were with a group of friends. Some suggested to play Party and Co. For those who do not know the game, it's a board game where you play in teams and draw cards. With one category, you have to draw, sing, create, etc. depending on what's on the card, if I remember that correctly. I had never played the game before and even after that and really did not know what the rules and the goal of the game was, our friend said. Just start. You'll figure it out while playing. So, partners could not be in the same team, so I was in a team that waited on their turn. It was my girlfriend's turn. Now she is my wife. She drew a card, and she also had no idea what the game was. She looked at it, and without realizing, I said from across the room, She's wondering how to portray Lambic. A famous but very random and old Belgian comic character. My wife looked at me annoyed, sighed, and put the card back. She drew a new card and it was only then someone asked what was up. She said, Well, he revealed what was on the card. And our friend said, That's not possible, he's across the room. They took the card and the assignment was exactly as I said it. We all freaked out and it still puzzles me how I knew the exact text on the card without even knowing that portraying was even one of the assignments. And besides that, out of every person, object, and anything, I chose Lambic, who is, like I said, very random and has no role or meaning in any of our lives. My fiancé and I live in a small three-bedroom apartment with my sister and our dog, Champ. Our floor plan has our living room and bathroom on opposite sides of the apartment with our kitchen right in the middle. Anyway, this happened a few weeks again during that super bad heat wave and our AC had just broke. My sister was in home and my fiancé and I were eating some ice cream in the kitchen, just trying to beat the heat. Now, Champ has had this weird habit lately of hanging out in the bathroom 
and peeing in our bathtub. I assumed it was to cool off on the cold bathroom tiles. And I didn't think much of it, because I'd rather him pee in the tub than on our furniture. My fiancé, however, does not like the idea of champ peeing in our tub. She thinks it's gross. Well, anyway, we were eating our ice cream, and we had heard what sounded like paws walking around in our bathtub. For the record, there is nothing in our bathroom, or our apartment for that matter, that would be able to reproduce the sound of a dog's little paws scratching around in a bathtub. Well, my fiancé yells out for Champ to get out of the bathtub, but there's no Champ to be found. My fiancé gives me that do-something look, so I yell out Champ's name. And all of a sudden, we hear the sound of Champ's collar rattling around and the pitter-patter of his feet coming towards us as he emerges from the living room. My fiancé and I stare at each other in a Nosferatu from Spongebob moment. So, who was in the bathroom? We both walk over to inspect the bathroom, and there's nothing in there. What we heard was unmistakable. I mean, we both heard it, and there wasn't any type of background noise or music or TV playing in the background that we could have mistaken for it. Our walls aren't paper thin, so it couldn't have come from our neighbors. We don't have rodents or past, and the only thing that I can think of is maybe it could have been a mouse or something. But even that doesn't make any sense. There are no signs of mice droppings anywhere in our house. And what would even be the odds of a single mouse coming and going? Plus, no way a mouse or even a rat would be heavy enough to make such a loud noise in the tub. Hello everyone, it's your creepy sister here. Thank you so much for watching the video. I really appreciate each and every one of you. But I would also like to thank my amazing patrons, my top tippers, and my dearest channel members. Thank you very, very much. I really appreciate it with all of my heart. If you want to support the channel further, you could also choose to become a patron, a tipper, or a channel member. But remember, it's appreciated, but never a requirement. I would also like to announce that we have merch now. The link is in the description of the video, along with all my other social media links, like my Discord server, Twitter, Instagram, and others. You can connect with me and send your stories there. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't yet, and comments are highly appreciated. And remember, your fear feeds me.